Good evening, everyone. <laughs> My name is Brian, and unfortunately, unlike Weijing, uh, I don't speak Korean. Um, I think the only Korean I remember is Whiting. Um, so th this is the, uh, the last presentation for this evening. So please just Whiting for a little bit more. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be speaking about animation and especially 10 things I really don't like about animation. 10 things that are really frustrating about animation. But I'm also going to talk about the things that Mozilla has been doing to fix those problems, the new technologies Mozilla has been developing for animation. Uh, but first, I should explain why I hate animation so much. Uh, I'll do that by introducing myself a little bit. I'm originally from Australia. Um, but I currently live in uh, Tokyo and I've worked um, on Firefox for about 15 years and mostly on animations, on CSS animations and web animations and also on the standards for animations uh, at the CSS working group. Uh, recently I switched and started a new company that works on web browsers and web apps but I'm still working on animations in Firefox and animation specifications as well. So for about 15 years, I have been working with animations. So maybe more than most people, I have experienced how frustrating they can be and how hard they can be. Um, because I think animations actually <laughs> are very hard. Um, you have to always think about performance if you don't, then things get slow and there's all sorts of bugs that come up. And if you get it wrong, it's, it's frustrating for you, but it's also frustrating for your users. So maybe some people know this uh, <laughs> goose game. Animations for me are a bit like this goose. It's always kind of teasing you, trying to trip you up, and it's always something that's going to go wrong. Um, so today I want to talk about 10 different things that are frustrating with animations and how to fix them, some of the new technologies for fixing them. So I'll start with the simplest possible kind of animation, not a, um, a complicated one, just one where there are several frames that you show in a row. So maybe an animation like this one. We could make this with uh, perhaps seven frames and then just show them one by one. Maybe we would think we can set it up like this, a long strip of frames, and then a CSS animation, and there's steps timing function, so it jumps seven times. Surely this is going to work, right? Well, if we try it, it doesn't. Um, it's all <laughs> unaligned. <laughs> Why? What's wrong? Well, it turns out this seven in the steps function is not the number of frames, it's the number of times it changes the number of jumps, including the jump at the very end. So maybe we need to make it six instead. Uh, if we do that, then it's aligned, but we're missing the last frame. It only goes up to six because this um, function has a jump at the very end, but you don't see the frame. We can change where that jump happens. We can use the start keyword but now we're missing the first frame. <laughs> so even the simplest animation can be so frustrating. And uh, so for this particular problem, Mozilla uh, proposed this new keyword, jump none, and that will actually finally give you the animation you want. Um, there's a few other keywords as well for completeness. Um, and these have been implemented in, in Firefox and in Chrome. Uh, we're just waiting on Safari to add support for that. The second problem um, which you might encounter with animations, which I certainly have, is when you use transitions in an application, you often have bugs. When we were working on Firefox OS, we had so many bugs in the Firefox OS applications because of transitions. And if you analyze them, there's basically two common problems. One is that the transitions never get created in the first place. And one is that 
they get created, but they never finish. Um, so if your application is waiting for the end of the transition, it's going to wait a very long time. So to fix this, at uh, Mozilla, uh, we proposed uh, some new events. One is a transition run, and that will tell you that the transition got created. So uh, if you don't get that, you shouldn't bother waiting for the transition end. And the other one is if the element disappeared somehow while um, the transition was running, then a cancel event will fire. So you know not to wait anymore for the transition end. There are a couple of other events, but they are mostly just for completeness. And this is implemented in all the major browser engines, but it's not yet in the release uh, version of Safari. It should be in the next version of Safari. Another problem which you might face is um, everyone says CSS animations, CSS transitions are so great because they're really performant. Uh, the browser can optimize them so they run smoothly, they can run on another thread or another process. But sometimes it's not convenient to write all your animation to CSS. If you wanted to do some sort of random animation like this, it's much more convenient to write it with JavaScript. But you still want the same performance as CSS animations and transitions. So you can try to make CSS animations with JavaScript, but it's really hard. If you tried to do this animation with CSS animations, well, first you have to think of a unique name for each keyframes rule. You need to find a style sheet object. You need to write a really, really long string. And then you, it might work. Um, but you have to remember to remove it as well later when the element disappears. So it's very, very clumsy to do this from JavaScript. Maybe CSS transitions are easier because they're simpler. Actually, it turns out transitions are even harder. Firstly, there's the transition end event problem we talked about. But even just generating the transition is very difficult. Uh, in March, I had a chance to speak at a CSS conference about animations. And I spent half the talk just explaining how to reliably generate transitions from JavaScript. Because it's actually very, very hard. So what should you do if you want to generate performant animations from JavaScript? A few years ago, Mozilla proposed this new API, element.animate, which will generate an animation from JavaScript, which will be optimized in the same way as CSS animations or CSS transitions. It's exactly the same code. And it's also convenient because it returns an animation object, which you can then use to for example, pause the animation or speed it up. And there's also a promise you can use to wait for it to finish so you don't need to worry about transition end events. This has been implemented um, in the major browser engines. And again, this is in Safari, but it hasn't shipped in a release version yet. But hopefully early next year it will. Another problem, and uh, this might seem like a very uh, minor one, but it's a very common problem is with CSS animations, sometimes you want to ease the whole animation. So for example, with this animation here, maybe I want to have that steps timing function so that it goes in, say, four steps. You could write this here. It says steps four. But if you count, there's more than four steps. <laughs> What's going on? If we look at this in the Firefox uh, developer tools for animations, you can see there's more than four steps. In fact, it looks like there's about eight steps. And the reason for that is that this easing, this timing function in CSS animations doesn't apply over the whole animation. It actually gets applied to each keyframe. And so you can't actually ease the whole animation. So what should you do if you want to ease the whole animation? Well. Firstly, this might seem like a very small problem, but it's a very common one. When we were doing Firefox OS, I got this bug report. And the reporter said, this animation seems to slow down in the middle. What's going on? If you watch the slow motion version, you can see it, it seems to almost stop in the middle. And uh, if you inspect it in the developer tools, you can see why. It's because this easing gets applied 
twice uh, between the keyframes. So how do we fix it? Uh, well, there's no easy way to fix it in CSS animations, but with the API I introduced, the element.animate API, you can actually set easing on the whole animation. Um, I realize that's a little bit hard to see. Uh, but you can also set it on keyframes, but you can set it across the whole animation too. And now you can see there are clearly four steps. The next problem, uh, what does this say? <laughs> um, speed, okay. <laughs> um, often when, when we write animations, whether they're in CSS animations or transitions or this element.animate, you always have to say how long the animation goes for. And sometimes that's not very convenient. Um, so for example, this um, duck uh, goose animation here, it doesn't matter how far the goose travels, it always takes the same time. So <laughs> when it goes a long distance, it's really fast. But when it goes a short distance, it's very slow. And so it's a bit unnatural, but the way animation um, technologies work, it's all about, you have to say how long it's going to take. Um, but sometimes I want to say how fast it goes instead. So how do we fix this? Uh, well, one idea is we could uh, go to the CSS working group. <laughs> I think one of the members might be here in the audience today. Um, and we could say to the CSS working group, please give us this feature, give us uh, <laughs> speed-based animation. Um, but that can take a very, very long time. Um, maybe it will be several years. Maybe it will never happen. Um, so we'd like to find another way. Um, and the, there is another way which I would like to introduce. Um, I introduced the element.animate method, and that returns an animation object. There's another API which will give you an animation object for a CSS transition or a CSS animation, and it's called get animations. So we could write some code like this, where we wait for a transition, check that it's a transform transition, and then we call get animations to get the actual animation objects and check that we've got the right one. And then we can look at the, the keyframes for the transition and decide oh, how far is the transition going and then adjust the time for it, the length of time or the speed. And if we do that, then hopefully we get something that's a little bit more natural. So a short distance should be fast and a long distance should take longer. So it's not perfect, but it's a little bit closer to what we would hope for. Unfortunately, um, this API is uh, <laughs> pretty uh, new. <laughs> it's implemented, though, in all three major browser engines. And it's just not shipped yet because we still need to fix a couple of things. But right now, uh, Google and Apple and Mozilla are all working together hard to ship this, hopefully early next year. Another problem which is a little bit similar is with transitions. They just go in a straight line from one point to another. It's just A to B, and you can't change how it gets between the two points. So if you want to animate between green and red, it's just going to animate in a straight line, changing each of the RGB values. So you end up with brown in the middle. Uh, and that's maybe not the effect you want um, in all cases. So if you had an, an app like this, then maybe you decide, I don't really like the brown color in the middle. Maybe instead you want to use yellow, for example. Um, yeah, that's maybe better. <laughs> or you could try HSL as uh, something, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but there's no way you can do that. Transitions don't give you that control. So what can we do? Well, we can us, the CSS working group, <laughs> uh, but that could take a little while. So instead, um, we can just write some code using that same API. Uh, so again, just wait for a transition, check it's on the fill property, get the keyframes, and then make up our own new keyframes, which have the midpoints we want, and replace them on the transition. And if we do that, we should get a different effect. So now this is using HSL, which is 
I think a lot worse actually. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's different and we can change it ourselves. We don't have to wait for a new specification. The problem with HSL is all the brightnesses are different. So probably needs a bit more work. But this as well is uh, not really ready for production, unfortunately, but hopefully early next year. Even so, there's still some animations which are hard to express um, because there's just um, something which we don't have features for on the web. Uh, for example, it's easy to make the goose move in a straight line, but geese don't often go in straight lines. Uh, instead, we probably want to do something more like this. This is a lot more goose-like, a lot more fun anyway. Um, and this has been very, very hard to do, but now it's actually become very easy because we have this new offset path property. And that will let you describe the path of the object and then you just animate its position along that path. So you can use it for geese, but also for things like an onboarding flow where you describe the movement of the, the mouse. And this has just recently been implemented in Firefox um, and it should be released in version 72. So we're just waiting for Safari, I guess. Um, another problem, this is for me the hardest thing about animations is performance. It just seems like you always have to think about performance and there's so many things to think about, so many things that could go wrong. So the simple rule is just to always animate, transform and opacity. If you do that, uh, you're normally going to be okay. And there's a lot of things you can do with uh, transform and opacity, all sorts of spin effects and fade effects. And if you really um, get creative, you can do things like even a color change by putting two elements on top of each other and fading one or a shadow effect of some sort. And uh, even the flying animations I showed you before, <laughs> that's, actually, um, that's actually a transform animation. It can be optimized in the same way. So uh, you can actually do quite a lot. In fact, a few years ago, uh, Daisuke and I worked on this um, animation of a Japanese uh, fairy tale. And except for the animation on the letters, everything else is just um, CSS, uh, it's just opacity and transform. So you can get a long way. But still, you might want to check, am I doing it right? Is this actually being optimized um, properly? <laughs> <laughs> and for that, um, the Firefox animation dev tools can be very helpful. They tell you all about the um, state of the animation, but also they tell you performance information. This little purple uh, lightning bolt um, next to opacity, that tells you that animation is fully optimized and so you're okay. But sometimes there's an animation which could have been optimized but which isn't for some reason and then it will give you a hint and tell you why. So if you're not sure about performance, please have a look at uh, Firefox animation dev tools. An even bigger problem though is sometimes animations can make people feel unwell. This year in January, I went to this amazing light show in Tokyo with my sister and it was, it was fantastic but after about one hour, my sister and I just felt terribly ill. And um, some people have that reaction to animations. So recently in different operating systems, there's a setting to turn down animations <laughs> and you can now inspect that from CSS as well using a media query. And you can either turn animations off altogether or just uh, make them more subtle. And of course you can check it from JavaScript as well. This one fortunately is implemented pretty much everywhere. So today I've introduced a number of things about uh, animations that I find really frustrating, but I've also introduced some things that Mozilla has been working on to hopefully fix those problems. Um, you might have noticed that I've only actually given you nine, uh, and that's because I don't actually hate animations. <laughs> um, I actually think they can be really great. Uh, they can be really fun, and they can make your app or your homepage more engaging and more enjoyable too. So please give them a try, and if you have troubles, 
that maybe one of the 10 or nine things tonight will help you to fix some of those troubles. If you want to review the uh, material from tonight, then the uh, slides are at this address. Or if you have questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you so much for your attention.